Today we celebrate the Chrism Mass. The readings for that Chrism liturgy are a, a powerful evocation of an agent. Sisters and brothers, in Isaiah chapter 60 to 62, the exiles from Babylon of the Jewish people have begun to return, first in small doses and trickles, but then a more vaster crowd. But what they see is destruction, a city torn down, not much left. In this in-between time, when they are freed, but not yet upbuilding one another and the local Jewish community, the prophet, Isaiah 61, steps forth very boldly. He makes a move about flowering, that the Lord had called his anointed one, his chosen. He will transform Jerusalem and Israel. What has been is only a small beginnings. Salvation and righteousness are announced and proclaimed, and they are said to be already happening. That's because the prophet is an anointed one, and he has an anointing. Is it that surprising, then, that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he made his maiden's appearance as a preacher publicly in his hometown of Nazareth, that St. Luke records, he picked up the passage from Isaiah 61, talked about the anointing, the visibility of it, the assurance that the captives will be freed, a year of favor, a jubilee year will be declared. Yes, the anointed one is here. He sat down and said the words were fulfilled. Sisters and brothers, that was quite an ambitious, overpowering statement by the Lord Jesus at the beginning of his public life. He spoke about prisoners coming forward, those who were shackled to be freed. We celebrate the Chrism Mass this year in a very difficult setting. It's as though this empty building is a sign that not all is right in terms of the church being able to freely exercise its ministries and because we are worried about this pandemic. Every week I have a meeting with the uh, hospital and other administrators. It was indeed their intensity uh, towards the uh, me and towards many ministers and leaders of communities, Christian and otherwise, to not gather their assemblies during this difficult time. And so we made the choice that we're going to have to be not so much imprisoned in soul, but in body, in our homes. And we're going to have to listen and watch from a distance the great agencies that take place whenever the liturgy is celebrated. And that's where we are right now, friends. Uh, it is very odd to celebrate the Chrism Mass in an empty cathedral. I know that there are those of you out watching, including our priests, and I know it is a difficult time for all of you. It is especially difficult, I think, for our priests who want to be near their people. I uh, salute our priests, some of whom have found some extremely ingenious ways to show they are close to you, their people. It may be through videos or through uh, uh, the use of the media, I understand some of them may, uh, some of you may walk in the neighborhood so they see you. Variety of ways. I ask my priest to continue to be innovative. Uh, we have to keep our anointing, which we received on our hands on the day of our ordination, that anointing alive. And that chrism anointing will stay alive as we do the work of Jesus in unusual circumstances. Uh, we have to admit that. We have to pray along with our people that as soon as the authorities that give some bit of change or some opening, uh, I will move on that right away to open our churches.
Right now, though, as we are in our homes or wherever you are watching this today, truly, we do announce the scene. Jesus, the anointed one of God, the son of God, has come and he has brought his anointing to all who call upon him, to all in his church. We particularly, or I particularly, reach out today to those who are catechumens and candidates and are about to enter into the church. I think you hoped, and as we did as well, that that would be this Saturday night. But it's going to be delayed some. But soon, you will enter the waters of baptism, and you will be anointed with the chrism oil. A beautiful occasion is awaiting you. So increase your yearning and your longing for this day which will come soon. If I want to speak about anything today, though, it is to those uh, who are sick, who are ill. One of the oils we bless today is the oil of the sick. And I want you who are sick to listen to those prayers. The oil of the sick has a particular place in the history of the Roman rite, the rite that we practice, uh, the liturgy that we use. It has always been the practice of the Roman rite that at the Chrism Mass, the oil of the sick is blessed right at the end of the Eucharistic prayer before the Our Father. So it has been for uh, 1,600 years. The oil of the sick, the sick who are entrusted to the Lord most especially during the middle of the prayer in which we repeat the words of Jesus and in which the bread and wine become his body and blood, a repetition, a quotation that transforms that which is on the altar to his very body and blood. And right to the end of that prayer, before we say through him, with him, and in him, we look to the oil over there of the sick, and we sing a prayer for the blessing of the oil, for bringing health of mind and body to those who are anointed with this oil. To those of you who are sick, I say to you that you are most especially this year in the Chrism Mass remembered for your health and well-being. Perhaps your fears are brought to the hearts of us all and into my heart that we will pray for you. And at the same moment that we pray for you, we're praying for your families who are so worried about you. And in a further circle of care and concern, we are praying for all the doctors and nurses who are caring for you, especially for those who are struck with the coronavirus. We're praying and asking God's mercy that this plague will end, that it will not only recede but end, and all will be brought back to pure health and agents again in their church. In a special way, our priests will pray for you, for this is their day to renew their vows and consecration. Every year, uh, Brother Priest, at the Chrism Mass, you always stand up with me, with me after the homily and renew your promises. <clears throat> Father Italo and Father Lawrence will be your uh, representatives for this Mass, along with Bishop Schultz. And um, they will speak those words which I ask. They will answer. They will affirm that you indeed are anointed and consecrated disciples, chosen. Think of yourselves as seated with the Lord Jesus at the Last Supper. Remember what he said in John chapter 17, in his high priestly prayer, that he wanted his disciples, those nearby, his apostles, to be consecrated in the truth, a total self-giving. And in the total self-giving, it is remarkable that you will retrieve his own beauty, blessing. Brother Priest, we probably have some more time this year than usual to contemplate in prayer the face of Jesus, the face of Jesus that prayed for his apostles the night of the Last Supper. Make his prayer your own in these next few days, do what you can always to make your hands anointed hands that stretch out in blessing and comfort. Jesus said his yoke is easy and his burden light. Your hands are to make Jesus' words real and cogent, 
for all the people around you who may be uh, at this point suffering some anxiety, some fear. You might say that it be your fear too in some ways. Probably that's so. But just remember, there's no cheap grace. The anointing of your hands, the hands of the bishop on your head that ordains you, this is a costly anointing. It requires of you a great generosity of service and also a typical obedience that our culture doesn't always treasure. You have to verify what has happened to you in being consecrated. Be very alert to the sick. Be very alert to those catechumens and candidates who will soon be in full entry into the church. And remember all the sheep of the flock. We need to do that in this particularly difficult, anxious, but still blessed day. I thank all my priests for the work that they do. A number of them have talked to me. Some of them are very anxious. Occasionally, they're a little disturbed that I haven't opened up the churches yet. Be patient, be patient. All will come in due time. Pray that this plague is ended and we can return as effective agents of God's love in the world. Remember Pope Francis. He says no matter where you are or what's happening, you can still be an outreach and mission. We need outreach and mission, even in these difficult days. May God bless you all, priests, religious, deacons, faithful. May God grant you all grace and strength this holy week that you will meditate on the Lord's passion and on Easter Sunday with your family, still cry out in your home and house and all around that Jesus is risen, alleluia. My beloved priest, please stand. And even if you're watching on uh, uh, TV, please stand. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. I am. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist? and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Amen. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, and pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my loneliness and that in your midst, I may be made day by day <clears throat> a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher and servant of all. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. And I add one last petition for all of those who are affected by the coronavirus, whether they be those sick, family members, in fact, for the whole local church here in Galveston, Houston, may God grant peace and deliverance, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. 
May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherd and flock, to eternal life. Amen. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith and Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body so that by your holy blessing, every one anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body and soul and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with your life, Bless them and make them, bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O oh God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace, and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed with water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. 
May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garments of an inner corruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.